morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we're going to be looking at the five best Charizard cards that we have ever had in the Pokemon trading card game. Although, a bit of a word of a warning before we start. Charizard's rarely been good. Charizard's not some powerhouse that has been taken over the format again and again. Charizard's never really been part of the best deck. Sorry about that. Couple honourable mentions before we get going properly. I am not counting Reshiram and Charizard. Now this is, by a long way, the best quote Charizard card we've ever had. But it's not really Charizard. It's Reshiram and Charizard. It's a basic and it, it doesn't really count. It's not a proper Charizard card. Although there is a basic on this list, so maybe I need to rethink that. Anyway... Point is, great card, currently crushing the standard Pokemon trading card game format, using Welder to accelerate energy and draw cards, and also being used in a Mewtwo and Mew deck to copy it. It's phenomenal and great and brilliant. It's not a real Charizard card. And the other honourable mention I want to give here is the Charizard from Expedition. Now, this is a weird one. You see, the Charizard from Expedition was never good, but it was supposed to be good. So we had three what we call e-reader card sets. So-called because there was an e-reader you could get for the Game Boy Advance. That literally you could swipe the cards and it would tell you about the Pokemon. And the sets were Expedition, Aquapolis and Sky Ridge. And we were supposed to get an e-reader format where we basically had those sets... And, and then it never actually happened. We got a different format instead. So Charizard was never good. But it would have been had we got the format we thought we were getting that we never actually got. Jason Kaczynski over on his blog explains about this very nicely. But the fact of the matter is it would have been good in a format we were told we were getting but we never actually got. Now... This Charizard, what it is and why it's so gosh darn good, the Poker Power lets you turn all your basic energy attached to it into fire energy. We're going to see that again in a minute. And then for four energy, you do 120 damage, flip two coins if one of them is tails, discard two energy attached to Charizard. If both are tails, discard all energy attached to Charizard. Very sad when you discard all the energy, but hey ho. And what you would do is you would play this with Venusaur, who's got the Poker Power Harvest Bounty that basically says when you attach an energy from your hand, you may attach another energy. Let's you attach two energy rather than one during your turn. And then you could also play it with the Clefable from Expedition that let you put a card from your hand on top of your deck, then search your deck for a basic energy and put it into your hand. So Clefable gets the energy, Venusaur lets you attach it, Charizard turns it fire and off you go. It would have been one of the very best decks in that format. But we never had that format. So it seems weird to include it on the list. There we go. I might do a more in-depth video about this deck in the near future. Because it's a really fun deck. So in at number 5, largely for nostalgia, we've got base set Charizard. The Charizard that when it came out was the one that everybody wanted. Now, the ability turns all energy into fire energy, so actually better than the Expedition one because it also worked with special energy, and you could play it with double colorless energy. And what you would do is attach double colorless energy to Charizard, turn it into fire, do 100 damage, which at the time was gigantic, discarding two energy to do so, but then you could just use another double colorless the next turn. Until you ran out of double colorless, then you do it every other turn. It was a fun deck and it was very powerful, but it was never particularly good. Back in the base set days at the beginning of the game, we were all using basic Pokemon like Hitmonchan, and cards like Energy Removal really did stop these slower, more energy intensive decks from getting rolling. Now, Blastoise was alright because you could attach as many energy as you liked with Rain Dance. And Alakazam did see a little bit of play as a disruption deck. But honestly, the base set was not a very understanding time when it came to Stage 2 Pokemon. Sorry, Charizard. 
In at number four, a very new entry, the Charizard that's just come out in Hidden Fates. And the fact that this is number four should tell you something about the competitive fate of Charizard over the years. You see, this Charizard, for four energy, does 300 damage. Now, it is a GX attack, so it's only a once per game thing. But what you can do is use Welder to put the energy on. And even though it's a stage two, you get it in the discard pile. And then Mewtwo and Mew can copy the attack. At the moment, right now, in the Pokemon Trading Card game, this is a great way to play Charizard. Because what you do is you basically aim for a turn two, Mewtwo and Mew copying Flare Bits for 300, which will KO anything. Turn one, you attach. Maybe you Welder, maybe you don't. Turn two, you attach and Welder if you didn't turn one. And then you've got the four energy you need to use Flare Bits, do 300 damage, KO a Tag Team GX, and already put yourself in a great position to go ahead and win the game. It's a really good card. It's only really good when you're copying with Mewtwo and Mew, but that's alright, that's one of the best decks at the moment. And it's only really good with Welder, but that's alright, we've, we've got Welder. Frankly, ladies and gentlemen, this is a great card, and it's seeing a lot of play right now, which is more than we can say for the vast majority of Charizards we've ever had. Another fairly recent entry in at number three, the Charizard from Team Up. I like the Charizard from Team Up, which as a side note also came as a pre-release promo, which is beautiful. And is very soon going to be released, and I showed you this in a video yesterday as a promo with artwork from the Mewtwo Strikes Back movie. So there's going to be three different prints of it, if that's what you're into. The ability says that you can put two damage counters on it, and then search your deck for two energy and attach them. And then the attack does 30 damage as a base, and then you do 50 more for each energy discarded. You've got to discard all fire energy. So the ability puts you up to 130, the ability plus your attachment for the turn puts you up to 180, and you can keep going above and beyond that. It's currently seeing a lot of play in Chandelure decks. Chandelure, with its attack, discards the top 5 cards of your deck. You do 60 damage for each Pokemon discarded, but each Fire Pokemon discarded can actually go straight onto your bench. So again, it's a way of cheating out Charizard. And you'll see that what we're doing with a lot of these is we're cheating a little bit. We're using Stage 2 Pokemon without actually using them as Stage 2 Pokemon. Because the rule in the Pokemon trading card game has generally been either Stage 2s aren't good enough. Or Stage 2s have got to be really good to see play. And Charizard just generally isn't good enough. Sorry. In at number two, Charizard EX, the one from Flashfire. I know. Slim pickings, ladies and gentlemen. Free colorless energy, 60 damage. Literally, this is why you would play it. This saw play in some decks because at the time, Verizon and Genesect was a really big deck. And they were weak, honestly. They were weak to fire. So you'd be able to do 120 straight away, and it would just be a really good way of hitting for weakness. It was for colorless energy, which meant you could play it in whatever deck you wanted. It meant you could play it with double colorless energy, and it was just a really nice way to hit for weakness. It basically saw play at the time, because it was a good way on a high HP Pokemon to hit for fire weakness with colorless energy. I know, and I put it in at number two. And number one, and I do believe this is the best Charizard we've ever had, the one from Arceus. This is the one time I can really remember a Charizard deck that was played as a Charizard deck. Now, the reason it was played as a Charizard deck was the Pokebody Fire Formation. Each of Charizard's attacks do 10 more damage for each Fire Pokemon on your bench. And then you had Fire Wing that did 30 damage for a single energy. Except it didn't do 30 for a single energy. It did 80 for a single energy. Which is a lot better. Or Burning Tail would do 130 if you could get the free energy onto there. And it was generally played 
using nine tails. You see, Nine Tails from Hard Gold Soul Silver, look how great the artwork is, has an amazing poker power roast reveal. Once during your turn, you may discard a fire energy from your hand. If you do, draw three cards. Now, this might look familiar because Salazzle literally has this ability right now. And Heat Factory Prism Star literally does exactly this right now. But at the time... This was phenomenal draw power. So this is how you were able to get away with playing a Stage 2 Charizard, because the draw power from Roast Reveal was just amazing. And the other card you would really want to play here is Rapidash that came around in the same set. The free retreat was nice, but what was really amazing here was that it prevented all effects of attacks, including damage, done to Rapidash by your opponent's SP. And back then, SP Pokemon like Garchomp and Luxray were just taking over the format. So that's what you would do. You would have Rapidash as a silver bullet to SP decks, and against anything else, alright, Charizard was still a stage 2, but you had a decent attack for a single energy and really good draw power with Ninetales to allow you to get the stage 2 set up, and all of a sudden it was actually a viable deck. I don't think it's some particularly amazing deck, and it didn't rule the format, but it was a really good, competent deck that saw a lot of play at the time. And you just can't really say that about other Charizards. Charizards have come in as little techs here or there. They've just missed being good on a few occasions. But in terms of actual Charizard decks being good, I'm afraid the one from Arceus is the best we had. Charizard has always been a very collectible card. But it's never been a particularly great card. Now, the top five most collectible slash rare slash valuable Charizards, that might be a fun video to do in the future. Let me know in the comment section if that's something you'd be into. For now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know your Charizard memories. Which is your favorite Charizard we've ever had? Which do you think is the best? What decks have you played Charizard in? Go nuts in the comment section. But be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash wassyplays, where we talk about a whole bunch of games that don't even have any Pokemon in. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.